Kakurabachi started off as a manga that was hyped up so much despite only having one mediocre chapter out. This resulted in it getting memed. I joined in on the trolling, but I kept an eye on it because I knew it had room to grow, and grow it did. The ascension this manga has had on a weekly basis makes me believe that, if given the time and space, it could become a truly great battle manga, regardless of its popularity or sales. Let's start with the good. The first thing that Kakurabachi does well is its action. It should be evident from the manga panels, but Hokazono is a master of cinematography and choreography. If this manga was just violent, the action wouldn't strike a chord with me, but the artist is truly a master of his craft. The different camera angles, the dynamic poses, the backgrounds, the perspective, the swords, the style, everything just clicks. The chapters with my favorite art are 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 13. Even outside of the action scenes, the author can create such epic and exciting scenes. My favorite example would be when Chihiro stormed a building by himself and interrogated the last guy alive. That gave me Batman vibes. Look at him sitting in the shade like nothing just happened. The second thing KB does well is the depth of Chihiro's character. In chapter 1, when he said that thing about fresh hatred, I hated him because it was so corny and angsty. I thought he was just going to be the archetypical hatred on my mind character. But chapter 3 adds depth to him. When he meets Char and learns that she's an orphan, an unexpected level of kindness is brought out of him. It could be that she's an innocent kid, but it could also be that he's also lost both his parents, and he relates to that. Regardless of what it is, he looks out for her and continues to do so for the rest of the manga. He asks if she's hungry, he respects her boundaries, spoils her with food, and protects her like his life depends on it. Not because she's useful, but because of who she is as a person. But that isn't the only time death is added to him. In chapter 9, when fighting an opponent who's using one of his father's swords, he takes the full brunt of an attack to prevent any civilians from being injured so that his father's heroic reputation will remain untarnished. This attack leaves Chihiro bloody and almost cost him his life, but that's how much he valued his father's honor. The third thing this story does excellently at times is emotional beats. Examples would be when Chihiro defeats the enemy in chapter 4 after he insults Char's late mother, which reminds him of his late father, when Chihiro took the electric attack in chapter 9, when he failed to save Char in chapter 10, and when Chihiro enters the zone to save Char in 14 and 15. That last one was special because Hokazono pulled out some super moves for this one. In 14, he comboed mid-battle flashback with a mid-battle character arc and a mid-battle power-up. Then in 15, he gives Char flashback of a tragic backstory and flashes back and forth between that and Chihiro soloing his enemies and coming to her rescue. The chapter ends with an emotional quote from the flashback syncing up with Chihiro saving her. Those two chapters were a masterclass. I've talked about how things like flashbacks and monologues can increase the epicness of a scene in another video. This is a perfect example. Now, improvements. I've read the first couple of arcs of great battle manga like One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, Fairy Tail, Hero Academia, and Black Clover. Right now, KB definitely has room for improvement. The first thing you can learn from the greats is increasing the frequency of character arcs. Some of these stories had a new character arc about every three chapters in their early stages. Character arcs serve as emotional beats that can also increase the quality of a character. The character arcs don't even have to be that big. It can be as small as Noel and Magna temporarily giving up before being inspired to keep fighting. Just that small internal struggle creates a strong emotional beat. So far, Kagurabachi has had very few arcs. Daruma had a minor one where he wanted to change his life around in chapter 8, but then he was killed. Chihiro had a small one at the end of 13. He was about to wait for help, but he decided to solo the squad. KB can do better than that. The second thing he could learn is more backgrounds or backstories. Character backgrounds add details to the character and flesh them out, increasing their quality. They can also create strong emotional beats. Think Luffy's, Zoro's, Naruto's, Sora's, Dear Cabby, Deku's, and Lux. All of these happened in the first 20 chapters of their respective manga. So far, KB has two, Chihiro and Char. Again, another easy missed opportunity. The third thing that I could learn is more themes. Like with the other two, themes could serve as emotional beats, but they also bring meaning to the story. All of these manga were executing a good amount of themes in their early stages. I have videos dedicated to the themes of One Piece, Fairy Tail, and Jujutsu Kaisen, and I've discussed the themes of Naruto, MHA, and BC in different videos. KB has had two thematic scenes. The first is when Chihiro decided to protect the civilians from the lightning attack in chapter 9. And guess what? It was a brilliant scene. Chapter 14 and 15 have the theme of Never Give Up, which is executed through Chihiro's arc and Char's backstory. So that's two. The fourth thing you can learn is plot twists. I'm not too specific on exactly how a plot twist should be written, but plot twists definitely enhance my enjoyment of a plot. Haku working with Zabuza, Sora being Orihime's older brother, and Dear Cabby having a secret book inside are examples of plot twists from early stages. All of them are strong moments in their stories that add life into the plot. The fifth thing is the supporting cast. By this, I mean a group of characters that accompany the protagonist on his quest. All the stories I named did that. Up until chapter 10, the supporting cast was extremely weak. Jihiro did most of the action. Shiba was with him, but all he did was assist him with teleportations from time to time and interrogate Daruma. Hinao doesn't do much or appear much. Char is fine. 
Azumi doesn't do much or appear much. Neither Hinao or Azumi stayed with the group, but with the introduction of the Kamunabi Anti-Cloud Goucher Special Forces, things might change. The forces are five sorcerers who can all fight, but with the current events, it looks like they might just come and go. To be fair, Bleach also took a while to assemble its cast. It was mostly just Ichigo and Rukia. What's so impressive is that Kagurabachi has kept me engaged without doing these basic things so well, so imagine how great it could become if it started implementing these techniques. In conclusion, Kagurabachi is a solid manga right now, but if it learns from the classics in the battle genre and implements their techniques, it could become a classic too. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.